I'm Keith Noble, an environmental quality analyst with the Department of Environmental Quality Water Bureau Stormwater Program. The goal of the stormwater program is to reduce the contamination of stormwater runoff and ultimately pollution of surface waters. Originally enacted in 1948, the Federal Water Pollution Control Act was the first comprehensive statement of federal interest in clean water. However, the act did little to control discharges of pollutants into the nation's waterways. By the mid-1960s, approximately two-thirds of the nation's rivers, lakes, and coastal areas were rated as unsafe for fishing and swimming. Highly publicized events such as the Cuyahoga River Fire of 1969 and growing public concern for water quality led to the Federal Water Pollution Control Amendments of 1972. Better known as the Clean Water Act, the primary purpose of the act was to eliminate the pollution problems caused by municipal sewage and industrial wastewater. Under the Clean Water Act, point source discharges of a pollutant to navigable waters required the authorization under a National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System, or NPDES, permit. As pollution control measures such as wastewater treatment plants were implemented, water quality problems were reduced but were not eliminated. As a result, the 1987 amendments to the Federal Clean Water Act recognized that stormwater was a significant source of water pollution. The amendments redefined point source discharges to include urban and industrial stormwater runoff directed to surface waters through discrete conveyances such as a pipe, ditch, graded lot, or constructed waterways. In addition, Congress directed the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to develop regulations for stormwater discharges associated with construction activities and industrial activities. The final rule and NPDES application requirements for stormwater discharges are identified in the Code of Federal Regulations at 40 CFR 122.26 as amended. Through Part 31 of the Natural Resources and Environmental Protection Act, the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality has been delegated the authority to administer the Federal Clean Water Act and issue permits for the discharge of stormwater from industrial activities. Section 3110 of Part 31 requires that any commercial or industrial entity that discharges liquid waste into waters of the state must have an operator certified by the state. There are three criteria to consider when determining if coverage is needed under the NPDES Industrial Stormwater Permit. First, determine if the industry is identified in the federal stormwater regulations. Many regulated industries are identified by the Standard Industrial Classification or SIC code, while others are included by narrative description. In general, the following industrial categories are regulated. Manufacturing, warehousing, transportation, mining, landfill, power plants, recycling facilities, wastewater treatment plants, and hazardous waste treatment storage and disposal facilities. For a complete list of regulated industries may be found at 40 CFR 122.26. You may also obtain a complete list of regulated industries by contacting your local Water Bureau District Office. Once it is confirmed that the facility is a regulated industry, the next step is to determine if there is a point source discharge of stormwater to surface waters of the state. Surface waters of the state include rivers, lakes, streams, and wetlands. The water body that the stormwater discharges to is called the receiving waters. A point source is any discernible, confined, and discrete conveyance that discharges stormwater into surface waters. Examples of point source discharges include, but are not limited to, pipes, ditches, channels, tunnels, conduits, or anything that conveys stormwater into surface waters. In most cases, Land graded to convey stormwater runoff across a piece of property would create a point source discharge of stormwater. At many facilities, stormwater is discharged from the facility into a municipal storm sewer system. It is important to understand whether the municipal sewers are separate or combined. 
In a separated sewer system, stormwater is kept separate from sanitary sewage and discharges directly into a surface water body. The sanitary sewage, which also may contain industrial wastewater, is directed to a local wastewater treatment plant where it is treated and then discharged. In a combined sewer system, stormwater is combined with sanitary sewage and is directed to the local wastewater treatment plant. If all stormwater from the facility is discharged to a combined sewer system, stormwater permit coverage is not needed. The final step in the determination process is evaluating the potential for exposure of industrial materials or activities to stormwater. Industrial materials or activities include, but are not limited to, material handling, equipment and machinery, raw materials, intermediate products and byproducts, waste materials, and final products. However, final products that are designed for outdoor use are not considered exposure. Facilities without exposure may apply for an exemption from the stormwater permit requirements by submitting a no exposure certification form. The form and guidance document may be obtained from the DEQ website or by contacting your Water Bureau District staff. To remain exempt from the stormwater permit requirements, the condition of no exposure must be maintained at all times, and the form must be submitted to the Department of Environmental Quality every five years. If there is exposure of any industrial materials or activities to stormwater, stormwater permit coverage is needed. In summary, facilities must obtain stormwater permit coverage if all of the criteria apply. It is a regulated industry by SIC code or narrative description or is converted to the NAICS code. There is a point source discharge of stormwater to surface waters of the state and there are industrial activities with industrial materials exposed to stormwater. Now that we have discussed the regulations, how does a company apply for stormwater discharge permit coverage? A new facility is a facility where the company has not begun industrial activities or produced any products. Before submitting an application, three permit requirements must be completed. First, obtain an industrial stormwater certified operator. Second, develop a stormwater pollution prevention plan. Finally, Examine the facility and certify that there are no illicit discharges. An illicit discharge is an unauthorized or illegal discharge to waters of the state. Existing facilities that do not have stormwater discharge permit coverage are not in compliance with the stormwater regulations and are subject to Part 31 fines. If the company that is operating at the facility signs a certificate of entry, it allows them to address the violations at a lower cost. The fine is equivalent to twice the annual permit fee. In addition to the fine, the company must also pay the permit fee for that year. Within 60 days of signing the certificate of entry, the company must complete the permit requirements. They must obtain an industrial stormwater certified operator. Most companies will have one of their own employees trained and certified. A stormwater pollution prevention plan must be developed and implemented. After analyzing the facility, the company must certify that there are no illicit discharges. Once these requirements are completed, you may apply for permit coverage by submitting a completed Notice of Intent form to the Department of Environmental Quality Water Bureau Permit Section. When the applicant signs the application, they are certifying that they have completed the permit requirements. Please note, that the application must be signed by a person with proper authorization. For a corporation, this would be a vice president or above or a manager at the facility that has documented authorization.